Hi and good day everyone. So basically today we're going to learn about homeostasis. So before we learn, you can subscribe, like and also share this YouTube video. Whenever we learn about homeostasis, we have first to know the definition of homeostasis. So homeostasis is the maintenance. This is the keyword, the maintenance of the internal constancy or the maintenance of the internal condition in the face of environmental perturbations. In short, this definition says that the internal condition should be maintained whenever one face the environmental changes. For example, whenever one face something like blood loss or whatnot, how the internal condition will actually adjust itself to face the changes and then maintain it back to the normal condition. This is what the homeostasis is all about. So this is the analogy of homeostasis. We have cell. Cell is the basic unit of life and cell make up the body system and this body system will be maintained by homeostasis that is essential for the survival of the cell. So without the homeostasis, the survival of the cell couldn't be maintained. And what will happen? It will lead to negative consequences. Okay, so here are a few examples of homeostasis that happen in human body. The first example is about the water balance or osmoregulation of which any individual should maintain around 90% of their blood volume. And the water balance homeostasis is uh, related to the balance between the fluid gain and also the fluid loss. And then the second example is about the carbon dioxide concentration. The concentration should be maintained in between of 10 to 13 kilopascal. So in order to maintain the carbon dioxide concentration, two mechanisms will be used by the human body, which is the gas exchange and also the regulation of the blood pH. The third example of homeostasis is body temperature. The body temperature should be maintained in between 36 to 38 degrees Celsius. And some studies stated that the body temperature should be maintained in between 36 until 37.8 degrees Celsius and the thermal regulation will actually maintain the body temperature. The fourth example of homeostasis is about the blood pH of which the blood pH should be maintained in pH of 7.35 until 7.45 and this blood pH will be maintained through acid based mechanism. And the last example uh, for homeostasis is about the blood glucose concentration of which the concentration should be in between of 80 until 110 milligram per deciliter. So this blood glucose concentration is related to the balance of the insulin and glucagon to maintain the blood glucose. So here are the examples of the homeostasis that happen every day in our body. So the next thing that we are going to learn in this topic is about the body system contribution to the homeostasis. As all of us know, there are about 11 body systems and all of these body systems work hand in hand in order to contribute to homeostasis. So we are going to learn of how each of these systems will actually contribute to homeostasis. So the first system is about the integumentary system. This system prevents the internal fluid from being lost, thus regulating the body temperature. The muscular system contributes to the homeostasis in terms of movement. And then the skeletal system, on the other hand, helps in supporting and also the protection, as well as for the storage of calcium. The nervous system helps to control and coordinate body activities. The endocrine system, on the other hand, regulate activity that require duration rather than speed, such as growth. And then we have the circulatory system. Circulatory system helps to transport the material, such as the carbon dioxide, oxygen, nutrient, and also waste product. 
We also have the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system will help to maintain the fluid balance. And then we have the respiratory system of which this system will take oxygen and remove the carbon dioxide from the body. And then we have the digestive system. The di digestive system contributes to homeostasis by breaking down food molecules into energy. And then we have the urinary system to remove the excess water, salts, and acid from the body. And for the reproductive system, uh, for this moment, they are, not, they are not essential for homeostasis. But all of this system will work together and contribute to the homeostasis process in order to maintain the internal condition of the body, regardless of the changes that happen in the environment. Next thing that we are going to learn is about the homeostatic components. All of us know the three main homeostatic components are the receptor, the control center, and also the effector. However, as postulated here is the whole process of a homeostasis response. So it starts with stimulus, continue with receptor, and then to the control center, effector, and ending with the feedback mechanism. So as we can see, the stimulus is basically the change in the environment. For example, the loss of blood, the body temperature went too low or too high. And then we have the receptor. So the receptor is side of the body that detect the stimulus and send the signals to the control center. So we call the receptor as the sensor, as any changes that happen in the body will be detected by the receptor. So the, the signal will be sent to the control center. Control center are the site which the signals are received, analyzed, and an appropriate response is determined. So the control center is basically the brain. And we also call the control center as integrator. And then uh, the information will be sent to the effector. Effector is the body site where response is generated that counter the initial stimulus and attempt to maintain the homeostasis. And the last one, we have the feedback mechanism, whether negative or positive feedback mechanism. Negative feedback mechanism depress the stimulus, while the positive feedback mechanism increase the effector response. So as postulated in this figure is the whole process of homeostasis. So it starts with the factor norm, which is the normal condition. And if the factor increase, and if the factor decrease, it will be detected or censored by the receptor and will be sent to the control center. And control center will analyze the information, analyze the signal, and an appropriate response will be determined. And this information will be sent to the effector. If your effector will help to correct the response, and it will turn back to the factor norm, which is the normal condition. So this is the homeostasis process. How from the changes that happen until the feedback mechanism, until how the internal condition will be maintained. Okay, so as all of us know, the homeostatic component starts with the stimulus and end with the feedback mechanism. So for the homeostatic feedback system, we have two kinds of feedback, whether negative or positive. Negative feedback is a reaction in which the system responds to reverse the direction of change, meaning that to depress the change to depress the stimulus. For example, the body temperature regulation. What happened when the body temperature went too high? So when this happened, when the body temperature is beyond the normal temperature, so the feedback system will help to depress the changes to restore back to the normal body temperature. And then for the positive feedback, it is a response to amplify the change in the variable. For example, the birth of the mammal. Meaning that in the positive feedback, the effector response will be increased to amplify. This is the keyword. To amplify is the keyword for positive feedback, whereas the reverse of the direction of change is the keyword for negative feedback system. So the, the next example will explain more about the negative feedback and also the positive feedback. The examples of the body temperature regulation. So the first part, uh, this is the stimulus. 
the body temperature fall below the set point meaning that the body temperature is lower than 36 degrees celsius so the temperature monitoring nerve cells is what we call as the receptor so the receptor will detect the fall in the body temperature and it will send the signals to the temperature control center so the temperature control center will analyze the signal from the temperature monitoring nerve cells and then it will send the information to the skeletal muscle and other effectors to produce heat through shivering and other means and this it will help to increase the body temperature to the normal body temperature this is the negative feedback whereas the response are meant to restore the normal body temperature is about the birth of the mammal so it start with the signal from the mature fetus so the signal from the mature fetus will cause the uterus to begin the contraction meaning that during this time the head of the baby pushes against the cervix so the uterus begin the contraction and whenever this happen the receptor which is the fresh sensor in cervix are stimulated and the nerve impulse will be transmitted to the mother's hypothalamus which is the control center or the brain so the mother hypothalamus will actually stimulate the pituitary gland to release the oxytocin so oxytocin will be carried into the bloodstream to the uterus so that the oxytocin will stimulate the uterine contraction and push the baby towards the cervix this is the examples of the uh, what we call as the positive feedback mechanism as if the effectors activities or effector response are being increased in order to secrete more oxytocin in order to help the uterine contraction to push the baby towards the cervix this is the positive feedback mechanism Alright, so we have come to the end of the discussion of for this topic as since we have covered five subtopics which includes the definition, examples, the body system contribution to homeostasis as well as homeostatic component and also the feedback system. So if you think that this video worth sharing, please do so. And if you want, um, you know, if you, you have any recommendation and if you have anything to share with me or the questions or anything, uh, please do so on the comment section and I hope to see you guys on the next video. So thank you very much for listening and Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.